Tick, Tick, Boom and Angels in America is, it's in the same cinematic universe. It's like mm. the multiverse. And I was suddenly like, oh my God, like, I get to honor my friend. I get to keep honoring my friend. I needed, I needed your affirmation. I needed you to see me. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Maureen Lee Linker, a writer for Entertainment Weekly, and today we're doing three rounds with Andrew Garfield and Robin De Jesus talking about Tick Tick Boom. So, the ship is sort of sinking, so let's yeah, start drinking. drinking. Yeah, start drinking. <laughs> for both of you coming into this project, how familiar were you with Jonathan Larson and then Tick Tick Boom specifically? Yeah, for, for me, Jonathan and I feel like we go way back even though we never met. When I was a kid, I was 14 years old, I was in high school, I was hanging out with musical theater nerds for the first time in my life, you know? And someone was like, yo, let's listen to the, to the Rent cast recording. Someone started playing the music and I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. It's like this rock music, because I came from a hip hop world, you know? But one song, Glory, came on and it was so good. I vibed with it and then I just fell in love with the rest of the album and wore it out. And years later, I made my Broadway debut in Rent, and it was like, Jonathan gave me my first job, he gave yeah. me financial stability, he gave me creativity, he gave yeah. me community. Just like showered in abundance and cheesiness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the best. Mm -hmm. Andrew, what about you? The community, the inclusion, inclusion the, the diversity, the radical nature of that, coming from a guy that was, you know, that, that had sex with women, mm -hmm. that was white skinned, <laughs> That uh, like that 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 is courage, man. Because like, he was an ally, in the realest sense. You know, I, I I came to the theater late in my life when I was you know seventeen, I suppose eighteen. I was only really introduced to what theater was then. And so when Lynn asked me to do this, and he introduced me to Jonathan Larson's work, it was like he was reintroducing me to a long lost brother mm. that I I didn't know I had, so that I could uh, help be the channel for his spirit to come back and mm. to affect the world with his music, with his yeah. unfinished song, and to continue that song for him that we all got to do, what you got to do with Ren and and, and now with, with, with this. Mm, mm. Uh, Robin, you worked with Lynn on your breakout Broadway role, so what was it like reuniting with him for this? Was there a shorthand there already? Yeah, first let's drink to that to that abundance. Right? <laughs> abundance. Yeah. Yeah. abundance. Yeah. abundance. Mm. <laughs> it was it was like it was like liberation. We know each other so well that it's like it could just be a look or like or mm. a joke. Yeah. And the punchline reminds me of what the note is he's trying to give me. Or it tells me what the note is he's trying to give <laughs> so me. Cool it's to so watch silly. That. I saw that with you guys. It was so <laughs> cool. It was just like, you know, Lynn was trying to talk to me. He was over talking to me because you know, we, we, had, we hadn't figured out our shorthand yet. And I, and then like I saw him and Robin just like privately like look at each other and he's like, Robin's like, I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you. <laughs> don't, don't, say anything, don't say anything, I got you, I got you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, thank you, thank you. I did sometimes receive, it wasn't receive. <laughs> How dare you? They always made fun of me because like when someone's giving me a no, I'll listen, I go, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Receiving. So that he would know <laughs> I got the message. <laughs> the worst though was when like I didn't actually receive it and I just said it. I lied. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna do that. I'm taking the note, but I'm not taking the note. And there was something about that comfort with him that that was true liberation. Mm -hmm. So it was just it was just dope. Yeah. And Andrew, you said you were jealous of that at the start, but how did you evolve or broker your relationship with Lynn? It was pretty quick. I remember like before we started shooting, I saw the schedule and I saw, wait a minute, you wanna shoot why you want to shoot me singing why in the delacour in central park alone in the middle of the night which is the ape emotional apex of the of 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 the journey for this character at the end of the first week of filming are you are you a sadist <laughs> and, and and i i i i, I go up to him I'm like yo no this is no <laughs> no thanks and he was like no no buddy it's great you're gonna dive right in and you're gonna get it out of the way and the path will be clear for the rest and i'm like don't bull the bull why are we doing this at the end of the first week and he was like I'm sorry I lied, it's because we're gonna lose the location. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so then from then on, there was this 
there was just no um, there was no filter between mm. us. You know, there, there are multiple things I can I can talk about with Lynn. It's it's endless, and that's infuriating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the two of you are two, playing two longtime best friends. What types of things did you do to establish that friendship? Were you hanging out a lot off it set? A, it was <laughs> just immediate. It's weird, man. It's immediate for sure. And and no, but we screen tested together. So when you mm -hmm. came in and screen tested, as soon literally as soon as you came in, before you came in, I was like, I knew it. But then when you came in, I was like, oh no, I mean, like, it's done. This is just right, just right. Oh, you know what's funny is I didn't know what was happening at, at that at that callback, but I do remember that when I was leaving, you gave me dap and you gave me a hug and there was something about, about the way we embraced yeah. that I just felt like, hmm, there's something happening here. Yeah. I, think I, got, I think I got benefits and insurance for the rest of the year. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, well, you both have starred in and received accolades for appearing in two of probably the most seminal works of uh, gay American theater ever produced. So, and, and that's also something that Larson explored in his yes. work. So how did those experiences either shape this or forge your connection and your approach to the work as a whole? Mm. I, I know for me, it definitely did because there was like, as a, as a, as a Puerto Rican man, mm. because so many of our black and brown aid stories from that period got colonized and it was like, only white gay men got to tell that that story. So now to like to get to come in and insert me, it's mm -hmm. like, that's right. Mm -hmm. I should, I have a right to be here. I should have been here a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So I gotta make sure that I do this right so that it this isn't the last time. Mm -hmm. Ashe. Hey, hey. <laughs> it's, uh, yes. it's beautiful. I I remember this is so strange because I because I was just finishing Angels in America, and then something really crazy and profound started happening where I was like, oh, this is like. These things are so, it's one thing. This is like Tick, Tick, Boom and Angels in America is, it's in the same cinematic universe. <laughs> it's like mm. the multiverse. Like, and I was suddenly like, oh my God, like I get to honor my friend. I get to keep honoring my friend. I get to keep, keep close to Priya because I didn't want to let go of Priya. I never want to do the play again <laughs> in my God <laughs> life. Cause like I, didn't, I didn't want to die. Uh. God you know, yeah. that like nine hours of, <laughs> of, of like sickness and loss. Uh, I, was, I was ready to, to not do that. But then I got to stay close to him. Mm. I, got to, I got to like hold him under my wing for the next three years as we prepped and, and shot and now talk about this film. And, and Pryor is a symbol, right? He's, he was mm. a symbol of, of all of the men. The, the, that lost generation of men. Mm. So. You got to give Pryor and John more life. <laughs> yeah. You just said it. Yeah. yeah. You said what I tried to say. <laughs> <laughs> In like five words only. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It looked pretty. And it's it's decorative. Pretty. I guess you can eat it if you want. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Mm. You need antioxidants. Mm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. I like a, I like an aromatic situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like yeah, all the senses. All of it. Getting involved. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a theater lover, watching this film was just such a joyous, infectious experience. Like it was just like surreal for me watching it. So with all that joy on set, was there one moment for each of you that was like the most pinch me moment of the experience? Mm. Well, I think one of the most joyful moments was doing no more. Mm. With you, especially the, especially like uh, when I there was a take where I took my shirt off. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't even realize I didn't make it. Wait, didn't make it. I forgot. <laughs> so, I'll drink to that. Yeah, it was so good. So the, just before the the big finale where we come out in our tuxedos and whatever. On one of them, I whipped my shirt off and like swung it around my, my white pasty body out and it, just, it made you like crack up. Well, the, we had to redo the take because apparently I stopped lip syncing myself. <laughs> it was like, we can't use that take because you weren't doing your job, Robin. But then, but then the editor, like, the, editor pretty. the editor was on the other side of the, of the world and he texted Lynn because he was like watching stuff. He had a live, live feed of all oh. the, the dailies that, that were coming through and he, had, he, he texted and he was like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> what is going on? But like it cut and like on the, at the premiere night the other night, Lynn was sat behind me and we were just kind of kept grabbing each other and holding each other. And at, at that point he was like, I should have used the shirtless tape. And I'm like, you <laughs> I should have used the shirtless, shirtless tape. Yeah, release the shirtless cut. 
Robin, you have probably the most heartbreaking scene in the film, which is when you tell John about Michael's diagnosis. Mm -hmm. How did you prepare for that and get in the right headspace? Did you like not sleep for two days so you were extra tired? <laughs> Lynn, Lynn had the audacity like you to make that yeah. my first dialogue scene. Oh. In real time, I realized that the way I had rehearsed the scene wasn't how it felt that day. Mm -hmm. Because I know for, for it, my friends, when they share their status, they oftentimes don't get to have that release where they get to be taken care of right. because they end up having to take care of the person that's receiving the news. Right, right. And I just felt like that was the dynamic for us. That was a new information for me. And I had a moment where I didn't want to, I didn't trust that. And then thankfully I leaned into it and I really wanted to honor that. And I really wanted to honor Jonathan. That day I had been in conversation with Jonathan from the beginning, from the morning. Mm. And I remember saying, Jonathan, I showed up. Yep, you better. So I hope. You if, better. If you want this to be, you better. <laughs> I'm telling you, you better. Um, anybody? Anybody? <laughs> then you know what? Remember that night? There was like um, lots of technical difficulties. There was like a light thing happening on the other side of the street. They had to block they a certain us out. sign. Like, it, and and there was this like forty, like forty-five minute, like respite break period. <laughs> and like you were like communing with the. Angels and I was looking at like the RAD amazing AD Mariella and and then Lynn I was just like look at this mother yes. He's ready to pop <laughs> and you you guys are around with a hot dog stand you give a about the hot dog stand like this guy is like ready to explode. his divine feminine energy I was, was like, like caretaking me hard I was like Lord. roll mother <laughs> you just roll it doesn't matter like capture this <laughs> because it was like it was bursting out of you and like. That doesn't happen often. I have to share something with you that I've uh -oh. never shared with you before. Oh, no. I, don't, I don't know why I'm taking this moment out <laughs> front of all this, but like, I will never forget that night we were shooting and having been in the months prior to, to that scene felt, I was washed over with insecurity to the point of like, I was having many panic attacks. Mm -hmm. And you asked for like two more takes. Mm -hmm. And you said, I'm so, so sorry. I was like, no, 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 we good, we good. And you said, no, 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 he's like, you, your work is, is so good right now that I want to be at your level. Mm. I didn't know I needed to hear that. Baby. <laughs> and, and like, you know, like that, that, that like soldierness, that like love for one another and that upliftment, I, I, I really needed that. I needed, I needed your affirmation. I needed you to see me. I see you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I see you, I you see know you. it, you know it, you feel it. Like you said, this is the life. This yeah. is the life. Mm, 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 mm. 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 Ah, it's so good. Dance. I'm like, I want to be in front of a fireplace. Mm. You know um, what I'm saying? Naked. You Buck guys. Naked. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have so much fun together. What was the silliest or most ridiculous thing that happened on set? Boho Days was a really fun sequence. Yeah. Also, Vanessa having to get her temperature checked again. Because, you know, the, the, all, with all the COVID compliance and stuff. Yes. It's like you got to get your temperature checked. So we would sit in our cars while the nurses came to, to look at us. And we would just, we would just be silly because we couldn't touch each other until we knew the results. And Vanessa was, be, was just being silly uh, and she was twerking. <laughs> and then she twerked so hard that she overheated. <laughs> so when they checked her temperature, they were like, girl. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Are you sick or you been twerking? You, you got Ponda replay? <laughs> you got, and they literally had to like send her aside, set her aside to just like cool down. And then she was, she was fine. And the diagnosis was too much twerk. <laughs> too much twerk, honey. <laughs> what lyrics from Tick Tick Boom do you think best sum up the experience? Ooh, what a way to spend the day. Mm. What a way to spend the day. I affirm that. Yeah, that's it. Mm hmm That's it. I often, mm, that, that's better than what I was gonna what say. What were you gonna say? You, fear or love. Like, that, mm. that was the lesson for me. I think I, I had been yeah. in my career, like, centering fear for so long, and Oof. I didn't identify it as, as that. Yeah. And then I got to the place of yeah. that good, good love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what cameo made each of you freak out the most? Mm. Bernadette. Yeah. It's Bernadette. She is a goddess. Sunday the Park is already like something that I love so much, but yeah. even just for concerts. <laughs> I, think Bra I think Bradley is Sundime as well. Bradley Whitford uh, as, as Sundime is kind of he's a great. major. He's those moments, that. man, those yeah. moments, mentorship moments from someone that, that we respect and 
it, it goes, it does. It get, yeah. keeps you going for the next two years, <laughs> like at least. It really does. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, I know you've talked a lot about learning to sing for this, but what about the piano playing? Yeah, I, I loved it so much. Cause I, and I got a piano in my in my house in London, and I was just like, oh, I was just like going through all the beginner, like, like kids, like <laughs> books of like how to learn piano. It was just so pleasurable. Like I just, you know, you get to, you get to like, Almost middle age, <clears throat> and, uh, <laughs> and then you're like, ah, oh, what's what's next? What's left? And then you suddenly realize, oh, there's a lot left, mm. and that's kind of cool. Like with the singing, like it was a whole new challenge and a whole new part of myself that I, I got to ex express and explore. And then like to, to be able to learn piano was, it was just like a wonderful, wonderful thing. For both of you, what's your go-to musical theater karaoke song? Since we are in a piano bar. <laughs> go-to musical theater. Oh my God, what is it, Robin? Um, Mine yeah. is, um, so you wanna be a boxer in the golden ring? Can you punch like a southbound freight train? Tell me just one thing. Can you move in a word like a hummingbird if you really need to? Ooh, that's fast. Can you bob, can you weave, can you strike, can you see if you need to? Or you might as well quit if you haven't got it. <laughs> Bugsy Malone. Oh, <laughs> yeah! Uh, see, he can sing, he be lying. That was just nonsense. That, that was lying. That was nothing. I actually think that my go-to karaoke song is always a group number. It's like, I wanna start off mm. good, so it's gonna be um, Summer Lovin'. Summer uh, nights, yeah. People, people think, so, yeah, because everybody wants to shit about Bob. Oh, that's the best. Shit about Bob, shit about yeah. Bob. <laughs> tell me more, tell me more. Yeah, does he have a call? Does he have a call? That's the Cardi B version. Uh, <laughs> well, if you two are going to continue this love fest, what musical do you want to do together Ooh. next? I mean, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, but I think we need a couple more years. <sighs> yeah, we're, we're a bit young for that. We're a bit yeah, youthful. You know, to get a, more, a few more wrinkles on my face. I mean, we could do rant. It, we'd be we'd be older than the rest of it. Than uh, the rest of the cast. Might be a little sad. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. That's okay. We'll pull it back. I mean, I saw Anthony and Adam do it at the 15th anniversary, and I they think. were fierce. They were so good. But so you're fine. You're right, Roger and Mark, right here. Whatever you want to do. That's all my questions. But first, to wrap this up. This is the life, bo 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 bo. bo. This is the life, bo 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 bo. This is the life, bo 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 bo. Bohemia, bohemia. Bo 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 bo. Hey. And that's three rounds, everybody. <laughs>